Uh, I see someone in the back. Could you identify yourself, please? It's hard to see uh, faces from here because of the lights. Uh, I'm Chris McLeod. I chair the Foreign Affairs Committee of the House of Commons in uh, London. Um, uh, Foreign Minister, I hate to raise another elephant in the room, uh, but both you and the uh, Prime Minister of Iraq, and indeed His Majesty uh, King Abdullah before, all talked about uh, uh, Daesh being un-Islam. Uh, isn't and I'm quoting here from an article in the Atlantic by Greg, which you're almost certainly familiar with. The reality is that the Islamic State is Islamic, very Islamic. Yes, it has attracted psychopaths and adventure seekers drawn largely from the disaffected populations of the Middle East and Europe, but the religion preached by its most ardent followers derives from coherent and even learned interpretations of Islam. And the article obviously goes on to advise us to base our strategy on countering Daesh with that understanding of his heart, so I invite you to comment on that. Every religion has perverts and psychopaths who try to hijack it. ISIS is as much Islamic as the KKK is Christian. Don't they have a cross? Don't they do everything in the name of religion and Christ? Don't they believe that Christ compels them to lynch and kill people of African descent? Can one really say that the KKK is a Christian organization? There are other groups that one can point to. There are other massacres that were committed in the name of keeping certain countries or region, regions clear of non-Christians. There are people like this also in the Jewish faith that have nothing to do with Judaism. There are people like this in the Hindu faith that have nothing to do with Hinduism. For anyone to argue that Daesh is Islamic is preposterous. In the Islamic faith, the Quran <coughs> reveals that you have your faith and I have my faith. And you're free to practice your faith and I'm free to practice mine. What greater sign of tolerance and acceptance do you have than this? In the Islamic faith it says, he who kills an innocent soul is as if he has killed all of humanity. And he who saves an innocent soul is as if he killed, as if he saved all of humanity. What more, what better example of compassion and mercy do you have than this? So if you look at what Daesh says and you say it's in the scriptures, doesn't the Old Testament say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? If somebody does it today, would you say they were Christian or they were Jewish? So I caution people because it seems to have become almost novel. Not novel, it's become, it's become the flavor of the day to try to read things into Daesh or into Islam that are not there. The Islamic religion an Islamic civilization was the civilization that preserved the history of Greek and Rome and passed it on to the West. Western civilization would not exist without the Islamic Arab civilization. The Islamic civilization and the Islamic Arab civilization was the civilization that connected China with Europe. So it was global. I, the point I made early on about being an intermediate civilization, this is what I mean. So if Islam was intolerant and Daesh represented Islam, would Islam have preserved Aristotle and Socrates and passed it on to the West? Would Islam have connected Eastern civilization with Western civilization? Of course not. So I urge you, all of you, to be careful when it comes to making generalizations or to accepting generalizations that have no basis in fact. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lutra. Final question, is that Anne-Marie Slaughter? It is. Hi, uh, Anne-Marie Slaughter, the President and CEO of New America. Hi, Anne. <laughs>
Uh, thank you very much for addressing uh, the issue of women in your country. I think you are right to see that this is an increasing issue for many in the world, that it should be addressed openly. I just wanted to add, make sure I heard you correctly, because what I heard you say was that there is nothing in your culture that, that prohibits the, or that, that retards the advancement of women. Is that, did I hear that right? What I was saying is that uh, in our faith, at least that in, when it comes to some of the issues like women's driving, that this is not a religious issue, this is a societal issue. When it comes to things, to issues like education, this is not a religious issue, this was a societal issue, but we dealt with it. And we went from no schools for women in 1960 to universal education to where today 55% of college students in Saudi Arabia are women. I can give you another statistic, but it would embarrass me as a Saudi male. More than 60% of graduate students in Saudi Arabia are women. Some of our top doctors and engineers and lawyers and business people are women. So the opportunities are there. It's not, the, the issue is one that is evolving, just like it is evolving in other countries. America, one of the world's great democracies, gained its independence, my mathematics is not very good, 220 years ago, 200, 1776, 250 years ago almost. It took 100 years before women were given the right to vote. It took another 100 years before a woman was elected Speaker of the House. I'm not saying give us 200 years. I'm just saying be patient. And when it comes to societal change, in every society, people tend to look at where they are, where they are now, and they think everybody should be with us. Again, I will quote America, maybe because I spent so much of my life there. America was independent in 1776. The Republic was founded, what, two decades later? It took almost 80 years before slavery was abolished. It took 100 years before there was a civil rights movement. And it took another three decades before you had, before you had real social, uh, racial equality in America. Things take time. Now, you hope that in the modern world with technology and with communications, this process is accelerated, but it takes time. And we must acknowledge this and accept this. We can't expect to rush things overnight. Otherwise, we wouldn't be who we are. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister. Let's give a hand to uh, Foreign Minister of, of Saudi Arabia.